Welcome back. So far this semester you have investigated the Nevada State Standards for your dream classroom. You've learned how to add in different fonts and images into a Word document. You also have investigated the difference between standards, the destination we want all students to arrive to, and objectives, the steps along the way that we need to take in order for students to successfully arrive at that destination. So one helpful hint here is that you have your Helpful 100 handout. This is a good thing to print off. You will be using these words for every lesson activity, a technology activity worksheet. So print this off, have it handy. Make sure that you do not use words like know, understand, grasp, unless they're physically grasping something, um, learn, these words happen in a student's head and a teacher cannot observe and measure them. So make sure you are not using those words, okay? Even write them on your, your printout. Do not use the words know, understand, learn, grasp. Um, there's one more I'm not thinking of right now that's common, but um, put those at the top of this printed handout so that you do not use those words. All right, so when you're writing your objectives, you're writing a uh, student's will, and then you're choosing a word from this list, and then saying what they will do. Okay, that's important for this week. As always, we start with our map, and our map will help us understand what technology on our buffet we are going to focus on in this unit. So we're going to look at digital storytelling tools. There's a lot of them that are out there. The focus um, for this semester is on Storybird, but I also will show you some alternatives to that. So Storybirds are a way that students can take concepts that they are being learned, they can write about those concepts and understand them in a more uh, deep manner. You can create stories to read to your students. Your students can create stories of their own. So this activity can go a couple of ways. Um, you can write up the technology worksheet by having students create a story bird story or um, in for maybe pre-k kindergarten maybe early first grade you might want to create a story to help in your presentation of a concept I'll show you examples of both so our objectives will be to connect learning theory to game-based activities to find interactive stories online to use in multiple subjects areas in the classroom. You're going to think back to the unit one where you investigated the Nevada State Standards for your dream classroom. You're going to pick one of those standards, the topic of one of those standards. Then you're going to write some measurable and observable objectives, steps along the way using the Helpful 100 handout, and then you're going to create a story bird as either a presentation to the whole group or an example of what students might create to show you their knowledge. Here under the presentation I have a couple of other resources talking about what story bird does and um, some other helpful tutorial links that after watching this tutorial and playing with it on your own you are having some difficulty here are some more resources you're going to read chapter one in your textbook and uh, there's a quiz on chapter one 
You have a free 30-day StoryBird account by going to storybird.com. Make sure you choose the individual account there. You'll be approached with several options, but you're wanting to choose the individual account. So I have several StoryBird examples of a complete lesson activity worksheet. And um, so we'll go through that. All right, so that is our map. Sometimes I close these just so that I don't have to scroll so much once you get down into the deeper units. Okay, um, let's go ahead and let me show you an example of some story birds. Um, let's see, I want to show you first here. I want to show you an example assignment first. All right, so here is um, the components that you will need. You will need to pick a standard from your uh, Dream Classroom standards. Write measurable and observable objecti objectives, getting those words from the helpful 100 handout that we had last unit and this unit. And then you are going to write an example of how you plan to use the Storybird in the classroom and then put a link to your Storybird. Okay, so let's look at this example. This is for a social studies class and they're going to use Storybird to explain how literature, music, art, and technology are tools used to express protest and support for social change. So um, that's the standard. That's where they want all students to be able to know at the end of the lesson. The objective that the student wrote is students will illustrate using Storybird technology how societies do these things. Okay. Um, so this is what their planned activity is. Uh, I would ask the students when the last time they used the Twitter, their Twitter or Facebook to figure out what their plans were going to be for the weekend. I would use this technology to help students investigate the idea of social media to be used as a tool for social change and to become more comfortable using Storybird. I want the students to provide specific examples of certain societies using literature, music, and art as tool for social change. I also want the students to be creative with this exercise and for them to give current examples of how technology has helped with social protest and change. So um, examples of this would be the Arab Spring and Occupy Wall Street. My direct instruction would be used to cover the state standard. Students will construct a story bird and choose specific events and explain how people have used literature, music, art, and technology to protest or support and prompt social change. I will assess the students' content knowledge and comfort with the technology during their pre presentation. Okay, so uh, we have the standard from the standards of the chosen grade level, the Dream Classroom. We have written objectives that are measurable and observable using words from that helpful 100 list. And then a description of how this teacher plans to use the technology. So then um, we'll click on the example. Oh, it looks like they have taken that down, which is okay. That's not really necessary. I have some other examples to show you. Okay. So let's show some of my other examples for story birds done in the past. I have a whole bunch here. We'll just go over a few. All right, so um, this one, the purpose is, I think this was maybe second grade. Doesn't have the standards or objectives, but it gives you an idea of what the story bird was. Um, so this was about the parts of speech. I think it was for second grade. Um, students will create a story bird describing the parts of speech. Students will be using story bird as an example of how one might look. Let's look at this one. Hmm. 
Let's see if I can sign in. It's an issue you have to sign in. You might need to go in and create your free uh, account. And then when it asks you to sign in like that, um, you will be able to sign in. So you may need to create an account first before you can look at the examples. But I'll show you some examples here. All right, so parts of speech. Meet two adjectives, furry and fuzzy. Furry and fuzzy are brothers who are always together. Their favorite thing to do is to come up with fun and creative words to describe their friends and the things they see. Here is Furry and Fuzzy's friend Carrot. Carrot is a noun and he has lots of family because a noun is a person, any place, or anything. Can you name any other nouns? Ah, it's the prepositions. On, at, and over. They are always hovering above the ground. Their favorite game is to hide and seek because they are experts at hiding under beds, between the couch and the walls, behind doors, and around corners. Meet yell the verb, but bring your earplugs. Yell is always doing something and always yelling why he does it. Yell likes to do lots of actions like jump, sing, swim, dance, think, and read. What are your favorite verbs? Here is she. She is a pronoun. She's best friends with he, it, they, and them. She and her friends give noun a break when he needs it. What pronoun do you belong to? This is boldly, the adverb. He hula hoops quickly. He likes to help answer questions. How, when, where, or how much? Here are our friends and an or. And is a conjunction. Or is a conjunction. They help stick things together like your sandwich or your phrases together. Last but not least is ouch, the interjection. Ouch helps bring emotion to our sentences. All the parts of speech help make your sentences, so keep them all in your brain. Do you remember them all? Adjective, noun, preposition, verb, pronoun, adverb, conjunction, and interjection. So as you go through Storybird, you'll realize that it's a little bit different in creating stories than what you may have done in the past. Imagine that you have been hired by a big publishing company who has illustrators already on staff that have created thousands and thousands of beautiful artwork. So the publishing house, they don't want to uh, make new illustrations. They want you to create stories from the beautiful illustrations and pictures they already have. So part of your challenge will be to um, go into Storybird and you're going to look at different picture books and find a group of illustrations from an artist and create a story from the illustrations that are already there. So if I like these illustrations, I can click here on this artist. I'll click on that artist. And this shows me all of the artwork from this artist. So I'm thinking in my head for my activity could I write a story from this artwork that already exists? So if I keep scrolling down, there's lots and lots of this artwork. So if I have decided that yes, I can create my story from this artwork, I click on Use This Art. And we're going to choose a picture book. And my membership has expired here. So, um, you'll have 30 days to create a story bird. So um, let's keep looking at some examples. Okay, and then I'll log in a different way. All right, so let's look. Um, here's one 
where students are going to create a story bird of their own to apply the three laws of motion. Mary's battle with the law of law, uh, laws of physics. There once was a witch named Mary whose passion was to ride on her broomstick all night long. Before taking flight each night, she would spy the sky for any obstructions in her intended path. She did not want anything unexpected to occur while she was flying and having the possibility of being knocked off her broomstick. It was very unlikely that she would meet up with any vampires since she stayed away from their feeding grounds, but on this night she wanted to try a little mischief during her travels and began to search for a target. On this particular night as she was soaring through the sky, she spotted a boy riding his skateboard with ease. She took it upon herself to use her magical powers and cause the boy to fall down but his fall wasn't as bad as the one Mary was about to have. What Mary forgot to remember was that she was flying on her broomstick and as she enacted her spell, she fell off. She began to fall from the sky due to the force of gravity not now acting upon her without her precious broomstick. Mr. Frankenstein wanted to know how fast Mary was going when she struck the ground. He plucked the petals from the flower as he counted, and it took six seconds for Mary to fall. He knew that acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. He also knew that acceleration is equal to velocity final minus velocity initial divided by time. Mary's initial velocity was zero, her final velocity when she struck the ground was approximately 60 meters per second. The results of the fall and ensuing impact with the ground left Mary to become fully introduced into her final resting place. A little bit gruesome, but fun, to, fun for um, high schoolers. This is high school physics, right? This just goes to show everyone that it does not pay to forget the laws of physics while traveling anywhere. So everywhere that you go to, um, that if you like that artist and want to look at that artist's work, you can click on that artist. And look at that artist's work you're asking in your head, can you create a story that goes along with the standard and the objectives you have chosen using just this artwork? And you might have to get a little creative like this person did with the um, Frankenstein. So if you can use that artwork, then you will click on use this artwork to create a picture book. Okay, so there's lots of different examples here. Remember that you need to log into Storybird in order to view them now. Um, so here's one about common weather sayings. Here's another one about Native American folk tales. Here's one on Greek gods. Here's one uh, for pre-K about how to use our five senses. Um, here's one about um, creating a, a, a planet story. Here's one about music and how music can be listened to everywhere. Um, here's another idea about um, this would be a health standard on washing hands before you eat. So this one I think was either pre-K or kindergarten or first grade, somewhere along there. Um, this is another one about linear equations and equalities. Here's one about a leopard named Stu who's looking for friends. Here's one about all about me. So you see the wide variety. Um, here's one for chemistry, single replacement, a love story. This one's really funny. So even if you aren't high school, this uh, single replacement uh, uh, love story is really quite funny if you know chemistry even a little bit. So you'll see lots of different examples 
here for you to try. Okay, let's go back to our module. Alright, so that's an example of what your assignment is going to be. I'll click on this story creation tools here. So you're going to choose a topic from your dream classroom standards. Your standards should, should drive what topic that you choose. It should be a topic that you're covering in your dream classroom. So then you're going to learn about Storybird and remember that you select your pictures first and then you write the story. If you don't want to use Storybird, you're more than welcome to use other digital storytelling tools um, as long as you're able to share it with me. And I'm fine with one of those other tools, but I have found Storybird is really, uh, the images are beautiful and there's lots to choose from. Your goal is that you're going to create a five page picture book and um, it can be as an example for students or part of your presentation in teaching that topic. When you are writing your, your um, words for your picture book, make sure that if you use dialogue or someone's talking, that you use the proper quotations, commas, and capitals. So, uh, so look when I use, um, when Jill is saying this, that my sentence starts with a capital letter, there's a comma right here, and then said Jill. Or if, um, yeah, same kind of example, starts with a, with a capital, there's a comma here, and then uh, who says it right there. So make sure that um, you're, you're using good modeling of grammar techniques. Okay, so you're going to submit this in a Word document. Um, you will copy and paste your standard number and the standard description. Make sure to give that standard number that we've practiced and the standard description, please. You need at least one measurable and observable handout, uh, or sorry, <laughs> one measurable and observable uh, objective. So maybe go back to that helpful 100 list. Do not use words like learn, understand, uh, think, um, grasp, those kinds of words that we cannot observe with our eyes and measure in the classroom. Then you're going to give a paragraph. You will describe how you're planning on using this storybird in the classroom. 